Now welcome students to the new chapter which is graphical representation of the statistical data. We have already covered the basics of this chapter in the previous chapter which was uh, frequency distribution. Now in the pre previous chapter we learned how do we convert a raw data into a well managed data in the when we represent it in the form of a table. That was the tabular form of the data. Now when the data is so large it is very difficult to interpret the data in the tabular form. Then we have to follow the method of graphical representation. Now, what happens with the graphical representation is that when we represent it in the form of graphs or in the pictorially, the data leaves a profound effect on the observer and it is very easy and convenient to interpret the data and to manage that data. So this means that why we convert, why do we represent the data in the graphical form? The only reason is that it is much more convenient to read and study the data. Now these three bar graphs, histogram and frequency polygon, these are the three different forms of pictorially or graphically representing the data. Starting with the bar graph. Now I will give you a small amount of data. For example, there is a student and there are I will write the three subjects and the marks of marks of that student in the in those three subjects. Now first subject is English, then we have math and then we have science. Now student got 15 marks out of 20 in English, 10 marks in math out of 20 and 20 marks in science out of 20. Now this is the tabular form of the tabular representation of the data. Now if we want to represent this data with the help of bar graph this is the way we will do it. Starting but before I explain you this representation let us discuss what is the definition of the bar graph. Whenever we represent a data in the form of rectangles such that the width of the rectangle remains same but the height depends upon the amount of data up upon the value of the data then that representation is known as the bar graph representation. Now if you see the height of the rectangles is changing but their width remain fixed. Also remember the distance between these bars or these re rectangles is also fixed. Now suppose if I want to represent this tabular representation into this graphical representation how do I convert this. Now like I mentioned, mentioned to you that the height of these rectangles is representing the value of the each element of the data. Now we have three elements in our data one is 15, one is 10 and another is 20 and they correspond to English math and science. So that means one rectangle will use to represent the marks in English subject, one rectangle will use to represent the marks in math subject and one rectangle will use to represent the marks in science subject. Now how do we represent it? On x axis will write the subjects and on y axis will write the marks. of subject right now this is y axis and this is x axis in bar graph we write the numerical value of the data generally on the y axis but you can also write the value on x axis then the rectangles will be placed horizontally that means then this part will be will turn by 90 degree so we'll have rectangles like this but generally we make them vertically so starting with let's first define the scale on the y axis. Now scale will depend upon the range and upon the elements of the data. Now you see we our data lies from 0 to 20. So that means on this side we will have such kind of markings that we can suitably fix or suitably represent the data. 
starting this point is always 0 because this is the origin. So, 0, 5, this is 5, this is 10 and this is 15 and this is 20. Now, after I have written the data, you have to make the rectangles. I have already made the rectangles, but assume that these rectangles are not over here right now. First, we will have these markings according to our data. Now, we have to represent this data in the uh, bar graph form. So, we will make three rectangles for each element. For example, if I want to make the uh, rectangle for English, then the height of this rectangle will be according to the marks of this in this subject. The marks in this subject are 15. So, that means we will make a rectangle until and unless we reach 15 on y axis. And on this, we have to mark this rectangle as English. You can write English above or you can also write English uh, uh, below this rectangle. You can also write English within this rectangle like this English. This shows that this bar is used to represent the marks of the English subjects. Now, coming with the coming to the second element which is maths. Now, if you want to represent the math, you have to do in a similar way. Just there should be a gap between the two rectangles and you should always maintain this gap whenever you draw the other rectangles also. This should be equal to this and always remember that for consistency, we, we always take the fixed width. That means the width of this should be equal to the width of this rectangle and should be equal to the width of other all the rectangles involved in this graph. Now again, since the marks in the math subject are equal to 10, that means we will start from he here and we will draw a rectangle and will the height and will stop the rectangle when we will reach at 10. Now you see, if you draw an imaginary line horizontally, you will see that if since this is not 10, so let us raise it a little bit so that we can come up to the value of 10. Now this is the 10. That means on y axis the value of marks is 10 and the length of the rectangle is taken such that it will stop when we will reach at this particular value and we will also mark over here maths. This means that this rectangle represents the marks that a student got in mathematics subject. Now coming with the third rectangle. Again, we will leave a sufficient and a fixed gap which we uh, leave between the previous two consecutive rectangles and again we will draw a rectangle with a similar width and we will stop until and unless we get the value 20. Right? So, this rectangle represents the marks of the student in the science subject. Now, this is the bar graph form of this tabular form of the data. Now, this is a single bar graph. Now, there are some uh, situations when we also have to draw double bar graphs when we want to compare the uh, data of two different subjects. Now, for example, this is student number 1. If I also have a student number 2 and we want to compare the marks of uh, both these students in each subject. So, again, we will write the subjects English, Math and then we have Science. Now, suppose the first student got 10 marks in English, 15 marks in maths and 10 marks, uh, let us say 5 marks in science. Now, we each rectangle was made for the student number 1. Similarly, if we want to compare the marks of these students, that means we will have to draw the rectangles of or the bars of this student also into this graph. So, that means for each subject we will have to draw one bar 
Now, if you want to compare, we'll, we want to compare the marks of English of both the students, we'll have to draw another bar along with the bar of first student in English marks. The student 2 got 10 marks in English subject. Now, if he got 10 marks, we'll make a rectangle such that it will have the same width and then we'll stretch it up to the point where the value is 10. So, this is the bar, black color bar represents the marks, mark of the student number 2 in the subject English. So, I will write over here again or it is better that in place of writing twice, it is better if you write over here English. This means that this bar and this bar represents the marks of two different students in subject English. And let us shade this with a black color and shade this with a blue color. Now this is color coding that means blue color represents the marks of student number 1 and black color represents the marks of the student number 2. Now time to compare the uh, marks in the math subject. The st second student got 15 marks in the subject of maths. So again we will have to make a bar corresponding to this value 15 and along with the maths bar of the previous student. So this is the 15 value that means we will draw a bar up till here. Now this bar represents the marks of second student in which subject in math subject. Again we will write over here maths. Now the student 2 got 5 marks in subject of science. So this is the value 5 that means we will draw a rectangle over here a bar and this represents the marks of second student in science subject and we will also shade this bar and this bar. Now this is known as double bar graph. Now if you want to compare three students you will have to make three bars that means each bar will represent the marks of, a stud of each student in a particular subject. The first set represents the marks in the English subject, the second uh, set represents the marks of two students in maths and the third set represents the marks in the subject science. Now you see it is very easy to compare, if you compare using this tabular data and if you compare using this graphical data, it is much more convenient and easy to, to read this data. Now you can easily say the first student is better in the subject of English and science than the second student but the second student is better in maths when compared to the student number 2. So you see this small example tells us how easier it becomes to study the data when we represent it graphically.